Hello, it is Tuesday, August 15th, 2023. I'm Chris Remo and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It's a Tuesday puzzle today, which means should be another fairly approachable, uh, gentle themed crossword um, like we had yesterday. And today's hopefully approachable themed edition of the Daily Solve has been brought to us by Aaron Spiller, Overfull Hitbox, Jake Rodkin, and as always, the indomitable Shoalmaster and the incredible Horan family. So thank you so much to the five of them, benefactors of the Daily Salt Patreon campaign, for supporting this channel. Their generous support is keeping the series going, and for that, I am incredibly appreciative. So thank you to them. Thank you to everybody who's contributing to this channel via the Patreon. I really do appreciate it. It does keep this all going. And if you'd like to do so yourself, you can head over to patreon.com slash dailysolve to find out more and also find the bonus videos available to patrons, as well as for benefactors, the Daily Solve Let's Check the Crosses mug. So thank you again to everybody who's a patron at any level. I really do appreciate it. It. And thank you as well to everyone who's subscribed to the channel on YouTube. That's a big help. Do uh, consider doing so if you've not gotten around to it and you're enjoying these videos, which I hope you are. And finally, you can join the Daily Solve Discord chat server. There's a link in the description field beneath the video to that. It's a nice, friendly chat community. It's a good place to hang out and talk about crosswords and other puzzles. Okay, so let's get on to today's crossword. As is often the case on Tuesday, I don't have a huge amount of time today. So uh, that's all right, because usually Tuesday is not too tricky. And uh, this was a construction by Malika Handa, who has constructed, I think, maybe three crosswords, a small handful for the New York Times, and uh, was edited, of course, as always, by Will Shorts. So let's start solving and see what she has in store for us today. Our constructor, that is. Place with tilled land. A farm, a field, um, a crop. Flattered excessively with over. Gushed over, maybe? Um, fawned over? Fawned over would allow farm to be here, so let's try that. And look at the crosses. Singer Grande. Well, Ari Ariana Grande, I certainly at least recognize. Um, by name, and vicinity. if you're in the vicinity, you're in a particular area. Uh, plant, oh, here's our first theme clue, presumably. Usually if we have an asterisk clue, it means a theme clue. Usually if you, we have italics, that usually means that's a theme clue and there isn't going to be a revealer. When there's an asterisk, that usually means it's a theme clue and there is a revealer and the revealer will make reference to the starred clues. All right, anyway. Plant used to treat rashes. Well, I don't know. It's not aloe, I suppose, but we'll, we'll come back to that. Literary device that revises a previously established narrative for short. Oh, right. Okay. This is a relatively recently created phrase, historically speaking. Retcon. Um, I've actually, it's never occurred to me to think about what this stands for. I suppose if I had to guess, or what, what it contracts more accurately, if I had to guess, it would be something like retroactive continuity or something. It It's essentially when a subsequent book in a series alters the um, uh, some some element of the, the, the fiction that was previously uh, referenced. So in the way that Captain Nemo uh, in, I think, I think Jules Verne wrote two books involving the character Captain Nemo. And in the second book, he was, I guess you could say, retconned to become a uh, sort of secretly an Indian prince by um, by birth. And that sort of explains the source of his wealth and, and things like this. Okay, cheesy chip could be a nacho. And no more, enough. Machu Picchu, ancient Inca citadel, certainly a famous, famous world landmark. Oh, witch hazel. Witch hazel is a plant used to treat, ra treat radish. Ra I keep reading this as treat radishes, which obviously is incorrect. I don't think witch hazel would help treat radishes. But in any case, uh, yes, witch hazel does treat radishes. And there we go. Sort of could be ish. You could say that was big-ish, sort of big. Love ya. Moi, maybe? Sort of making this an exaggerated sound of a, of a kiss. Let's see if that works. Gotta go. I'm out, you could say. This is a very colloquial crossword today. We have I'm out, moi, retcon. Um, oh, what was this? Author Brown, Dan Brown, right? Okay, good thing I was looking back at these because I didn't even think to review the crosses. So that's Dan Brown, presumably the Dan Brown of the Da Vinci Code and other books in that series. And then, have we looked at this? No, we didn't. No more, enough. Um, 
gun control activist David Hogg, maybe, and then crocheted hair extensions. Uh, hopefully I recognize that when I see more of it. What about this Hindu spring festival? Holy is the first thing that comes to mind. I hope this is correct and that I'm not blatantly in in wrong about this. Let's look at the crosses, see if that helps. SUNY of Team USA Gymnastics. Ugh, not the person to ask about this. I'm not sure, unfortunately. And eco-friendly alternative to tampons. Eco-friendly. I'm not sure. We'll have to come back to that that region of the grid. Seep. If something seeps, it oozes sort of through, you know, through the cracks, maybe. Extreme. Right. Okay. Look at this. This really is an, an incredibly sort of colloquial puzzle. So extremely muscular in slang is swole, which I think is basically a contraction of sort of swollen to represent uh, kind of swelling muscles. I, I, I think that's basically the derivation. Lining on a winter coat. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I'm out is I'm off. I'm off. That's equally plausible. Does that help with this? Yes, because a winter coat could have fleece lining. Lads could be fellas. Look at that. Yet another uh, colloquial term. I hadn't looked at this clue. Exfoliation target during a pedicure. Heel. I guess, sure, you could get your heel exfoliated during a pedicure. Milky Way component. Um, well, my first thought when I looked at this was that it's referring to the Milky Way galaxy and we're trying to think of a, an astral object. And I think that was probably intentional misdirection. But in fact, I think we're looking at a candy bar here. So does a Milky, bar, Milky Way have caramel in it? I think it probably does. Is a Milky Way caramel and nougat maybe? I'm not, I'm not 100% sure, but that sounds right enough for caramel to be correct. Reply yes, no, or maybe, maybe. Um... What does it mean to reply with one of those things? To re... I'm not sure. Comedian Wong. Ali Wong is a comedian and an actor who is in the, uh, the show Beef. I'm sure that was very good. Payment after a split between unmarried partners. Payment after a split. Alimony? No. Oh, unmarried partners. Oh, right. Palim <laughs> Again, wow, this is really the character of this crossword, isn't it? So yet another sort of fairly recent, somewhat slangy um, creation is the term palimony, obviously a, a uh, portmanteau of alimony and pal, meaning, you know, sort of friend in that way. Uh, although obviously this would be paid to someone who is probably more than just a pal. Uh, but yeah, I mean, essentially means uh, alimony is on ongoing support payments. Grinder and Tinder for two are apps. Here we go. Another contracted word from applications, obviously. Pub projectile could be a dart. Dart is a, darts is a classic pub game. Uh, plant used to treat rashes. Another one of those. And this time it is aloe. So we have witch hazel and aloe. I wonder if that's thematic at all, that those three things are related, or if that's just a coincidence. Because here we have crocheted hair extensions and author brown. I don't think that has any relation. So I think that might just be a little flourish on the part of the constructor. Happiness, blank, warm puppy. Classic Peanuts book. Happiness is a warm puppy. Um, unlike the Beatles song, happiness is a warm gun. Uh, Italian sparkling wine as Prosecco. If one enters on tiptoe, say one stealths, is that used as a verb in that manner? No, I don't think... Oh, steals in. You steal, yeah, you could sort of steal into somewhere. You could move quietly and surreptitiously in there. Does that work? Hither and yawn. Yeah, sort of hither and yawn, scattered to the winds. Um, and then, here, oh, here we have Leonardo da Vinci as, as referenced sort of improperly in the title of the Da Vinci Code because da Vinci isn't actually a surname. His name would really, he's Leonardo is how you'd refer to him. You wouldn't refer to him as Da Vinci on its own, Leonardo Da Vinci, Leonardo da Vinci or Leonardo. Um, but here we go. We're just filling in the phrase. So that works perfectly fine. Crocheted hair extensions. Um, this, I mean, this looks really familiar to me, but I can't, but I can't tell if it actually is, uh, or if it just seems like it should be. Reply yes, no. Oh, RSVP. Right. Okay. There we go. Oh, wait. Goddess locks? 
Do we not need the K? I guess not. Enters on tiptoe. Is that what this is? Maybe, it, maybe it's just the LOC and not L-O-C-K. The D of R&D is research and development. Yeah, that is a D. College heads could be deans. Uh, so, you know, officials at a uni- on a university campus. So, okay, sorry. So that, I guess I just didn't realize. Okay, so there we go. And then what is this SUNY, SUNY leave? Team? Oh, I think I have heard, I've heard that name, actually. I just, just you know, <laughs> as you know, if you watch this series, I'm not enough of a familiar enough with sports people to have instantly gotten that. Okay. So what can we look at next? Sound from a baby or a dove. Those those creatures are both both said to coo. E pluribus unum. Uh, uh, together we are one, goes the, the motto. And we's opposite is non, so that's yes and no in French. Epithet for Aretha Franklin is the queen of soul. Oh, is it so it's 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 different sort of either mythical or powerful women, maybe, witch, goddess, queen, whoops. Uh, yeah, okay, I think that's the, that, that must be the theme. So, witch, goddess, queen, I wonder if we have any more of those. We'll keep looking around. Uh, Copenhagen resident would be a Dane. So, D- Diva Cup is the eco-friendly alternative to tampons. Okay, well, there we go, I'll keep that in mind. And then punctuation missing from let's eat Grandma, right, would be a comma, of course, as as is um, often, you know, it's sort of one of those funny things to point out linguistically. Uh, missing out commas when writing English can create uh, extreme unintended consequences. If one gets something, one acquires it. The first part of a tournament is round one, I would think. Oops. It shows up as a blue speech bubble. Is that... Ah, that, that's an iMessage on um, Apple ecosystem devices. Uh, the, the, the messages that are transmitted via cellular data rather than um, kind of SMS. Okay, so Shapiro of NPR is Ari Shapiro, is a radio host, National Public Radio in the U.S., and then removed from its husk as peanut is to unshell the peanut, I suppose. Didn't love it. Meh, wasn't a big fan. Here's another colloquial phrase. Robert Frost took one that was less traveled. So in in Robert Frost's most famous poem, the narrator took the road less traveled. Some OR staff are doctors, I suppose. Operating room staff would be doctors, abbreviated DR. Many an MIT graduate would be an engineer. And this is one of those clues that you could, at a glance, read as referring to plural, a plural answer because we say many but we're just referring to many an MIT graduate, a single MIT example of this thing, as opposed to saying many MIT graduates. So just look out for that sort of thing. Uh, whereas here we have some OR staff, we have some of them, some of the plural staff. So we have doctors, plural. Uh, if one notices something, one sees it. An enemy from one's past is an old foe, maybe. Philadelphia hockey team. Ah, I, actually, I do think I actually recognize this amazingly. Philadelphia Flyers sounds familiar to me. Do they spell it with a Y or an I? Twosome, a, a duet, I would think. No, not. A dyad, okay. Because <laughs> it needs to fit with one of the spellings of Flyers. So D-Y-A-D. Reddit QAs are ask me anythings when people allow themselves to be sort of sub- subject to questioning on Reddit. Oh, here's our revealer. We'll look at that in a moment. Potential result of using Grinder or Tinder could be a date. Uh, those are our dating apps. To give a speech is to orate, to uh, to address a crowd, perhaps. And an English county with three swords on its flags would be the county of Essex, not far from London, and uh, one of the home counties. And then here we have Lex Luthor, DC Comics villain. Certainly have sort of a famous Superman foe. So anyway, let's go back to this. So now our revealer, which points to for, oh, right. Diva was another one of these. I, miss, I I forgot about that one because it was short. I usually look for the longer the longer clues when I'm identifying theme answers. Um, anyway, let's read it. Feature of alien, Mulan, or Clueless, or what the answer to each starred clue has. A female lead? Right. Okay, there we go. So uh, the, the lead, the sort of first word in each of these answers is some type of woman, essentially. So 
Uh, and of course, also the films, Alien, Mulan, and Clueless, all feature female leads in their stories. So we have uh, all, all good movies. Anyway, Witch Hazel, Goddess Locks, Diva Cup, and Queen of Soul, each of which has a female lead. All right, a margarita garnish. You could garnish a margarita with a lime. That sounds pretty nice. And a brunch cocktail. That oh, Look at that. We have a cocktail crossing, a cocktail garnish. Brunch cocktail that might be bottomless. Bottomless mimosas are, are often advertised in a brunch context. So the champagne and orange juice. City that's home to the Last Supper, to the to the painting Last Supper. Last Supper would be uh, Milan, I suppose. I don't know that I would have known that off the top of my head, but it sounds very plausible. Like some toothpaste, uh, minty. Often, often toothpaste is minty. If one is in need of a friend, say maybe one is lonely. Oops. And a person from the Big Apple informally could be an NYer, a New Yorker. Uh, blank Vista, early search engine, Alta Vista, I guess. Yeah, that's true. I do remember that. I, I actually remember using Alta. I remember using it. That was the search engine I used before Google uh, kind of exploded and, and took over. I guess that one, I don't know what the sort of early 2000s, I guess, is what I remember that being around. Uh, manor, an estate, a sort of large property. And femur site, so the femur large bone in your leg, and then queer feeling question mark. So the, the question mark indicates that we're doing a bit of wordplay here or punnery. And indeed, the answer is itself a bit of a pun, which is gaydar, the sort of sensing of uh, of the, the, the presence of, of uh, someone gay. Um, and femur site... Well, that's what's the presence of, but sort of the identification of a person, I guess, more accurately would be how that's characterized. So femur sight leg and there we go. And that was the Tuesday crossword. And there we have it. That was, uh, I think, indeed, a nice, fairly approachable Tuesday crossword, as we expect, and definitely had a particular character to it. It was a very um, a sort of slangy or uh, colloquial uh, you know, lots of colloquial, colloquial English used throughout the grid with things like, um, I will not, I can't even remember, ish, you know, sort of people, I mean, obviously ish is, is a suffix of many standard English words, but also just kind of used in its own as a, uh, on its own as a term to mean a bit, uh, swole, we had moi imitating a kiss, um, uh, well, gaydar obviously at the end, uh, all, all sorts of things throughout the grid, just a very common uh, element of this crossword. Oh, and then little little touches that weren't weren't of a different sort, where we had little pairs. So we had Dan Brown of the Da Vinci Code, and then we had Leonardo Da Vinci over here. We had more of those, I think. We had Witch Hazel and Aloe. Um, and I think we had at least one more thing like that. Um, but yeah, sort of just a nice crossword, very much with its own character, out even outside of the the theme itself. Uh, and that's always kind of a fun a fun thing. And you could. Crosswords are so abstract in a way. There's sort of these kind of almost arbitrary collection of words. It is always interesting to see when a constructor sort of puts that that kind of personality stamp on it. Um, and anyway, this was one where I would say it had that. And that was that for the Tuesday crossword. I, oh, right. And of course, our theme, female lead of Witch Hazel, Goddess Locks, Diva Cup, and Queen of Soul. So I usually do review those at the end. And that was that for the Tuesday crossword. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll be back tomorrow, of course, for the Wednesday crossword, which is when we will um, possibly take a little bit of a step up in difficulty from this with a midweek, mid-difficulty crossword, of course, still with a theme. So do join me then. But until that point, please do have an excellent remainder of your Tuesday. Take care. Mm -hmm.